Tonight on Spotlight On, we have Hoda Hajernia, star of Real Estate Wars on Bravo. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being with us on this beautiful Tuesday evening. My name is Sahai, and you can find me on social media at Say Hi Sahai. That's S A Y H I T S A H A I. And right here in studio tonight, we have a guest from Bravo TV's newest show, Real Estate Wars, Miss Hoda. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, great. Thank you for having me. Let everyone know where they can find you on social media, Hoda. You can find me at Hoda Realty on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So this is the first season of this new show about real estate. Uh, we have two teams. We have Team Relegant and Team McMonagall. Mm -hmm. That's your team. Yes. So how did you get involved with the show? You know, I just, I got a call one day and it was from a production company and I wasn't sure if it was real, if it was legit, or what it was. So I, I was on the call, and she said that they're looking to cast some um, agents in Orange County for this new series. So I took her information. I gave her my email. She sent me an email, and I called John, my team lead, and I said, John, I just got this call. Do you know anything about this? He's like, yeah, they actually called me yesterday. And I'm like, oh, okay, so are we are we doing a show? Are we trying out for this? And He's like, well, you know, I've gotten several calls in the past for different shows, and I've never went forward with them, um, but they have my attention, and let's just go with it and see what happens. So, And they, that was the beginning. Yeah, that was the beginning. So prior to doing this show, you mm -hmm. were already successful in real estate. What made you want to do this show? Because some people are usually nervous about being on television. Mm-hmm. You know, I had my reservations. Reservations, yeah, on whether or not I should do it. But after speaking to a few people and uh, my family and also my fiance, they were so supportive. So right. I said, you only get the opportunity once. And I went to school to be a journalist. And so I said, well, it's coming back full circle. So. I'm like, let's just give it a shot and see what happens. So as you mentioned, you started out working in television, but behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You worked in news, correct? Yeah. What I worked in the newsroom mm -hmm. at ABC and uh, worked with George Pinocchio, who's my mentor as well, for a few years. And then I just wasn't happy. I had these um, really early morning shifts. I worked the morning news. so. The first show started at 4.30, so I would have to go in at midnight till about 8 a.m. or 9 a.m., I can't remember. But I, I wasn't happy with what I was doing because of my sleeping pattern. Mm. My I was gaining weight because of the times I was eating, and I wasn't being the healthy me. I wasn't able to work out. Right. Um, and by the time I would get off, people were you know, headed to work, so yeah. my social life was just not really there. So... After some time, it was probably the hardest decision I have to, had to do because it was what I went to school for. Right. So I had to tell my parents, you know, I'm not happy. So while I was working there, I started a sales job, and it was phone sales. And I did an amazing, I killed it. Mm. So I was working two full-time jobs for about eight months because I couldn't let go right. of ABC. So after I, you know, I waited out and put a, literally took, pen to paper and put pros and cons for both and I saw that there was more pros in right. doing sales so um, that's when I made the decision to leave. It was one of the hardest things to do but I'm glad it led you I'm to glad, where you are yeah. now which is here with us and on Real Estate Wars. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned early mornings and like an erratic schedule. In reality TV I've worked behind the scenes mm -hmm. as well in reality TV as a producer and so I'm very familiar with that freelancing you know erratic lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So what was something that surprised you being a cast member on the show as far as, far as the process of making a television show? What surprised me from being a cast member and now looking back at it mm -hmm. we shot so many hours and they have so much footage that there's probably enough for two more seasons right 
And what I saw on TV was just like, I, I would say an eighth of what we shot. Yeah. And I just, I can't believe it that they have so much, and they have so much good stuff. Yeah. But it, Only a limited amount of time. Yep. And they're trying and to there's get so it. many cast members exactly. as well. So it was split between about 10 people. Yeah. So, yeah. And speaking of so many cast members, we were talking about how they were unable to show everything that you were doing. Mm -hmm. So can you let me know? We were talking about when you do a reality show, you have to get permission from every location. Mm -hmm. And watching the show with all these beautiful homes that you guys had access to, I thought, oh, okay, wow, it must have been really easy for them to get access to these beautiful locations. But you were telling me it actually was not that easy. No, it was probably the hardest, most time consuming and slowest part of shooting we were planning on shooting for just six months it right. turned into nearly 11. wow so with that being said the reason for that being i should say is actually to get through not only the buyer the seller the homeowner to get them to sign off on all these documents and dis disclosures or disclaimers whatever it is that the network has the location you releases yeah exactly mm -hmm. If they're in a gated community, which all these beautiful luxury homes in Orange County mostly are, right. the HOA there doesn't allow, it's not easy to get past the HOA. So you literally have to physically go to a board meeting, try to get someone's attention, bring somebody from production along with you right. or give them you know, their name and connect them if mm -hmm. you want your client's um, property. To be featured on the show. If you want to push for it because they'll try, but at the end of the day, you know, it's how much you want it. So right. I got shut down uh, more than twice. And so I wasn't, unfortunately this season, I didn't get to feature any of my clients' properties or myself interacting with my clients at their homes right. because of that reason. Yeah, because the clients themselves also have to want to be on camera and yes. be comfortable with that yeah. and exposing their you mm -hmm. know personal life. Um, but you know, even though we didn't get to see it on the show, you do have a successful real estate business, mm -hmm. um, Hoda Realty, correct? Yes. How long have you had your company? I've been licensed now for a little over two years. I've been with the McMonagall team the entire time. Um, when I was working under my uncle, I wasn't an agent, mm -hmm. and or my I should say my uncles, I wasn't an agent, so I was just assisting them with everything from A to Z. So I had it in, you know, it was in the family, it was from familiar to me. So I decided to get my license, and I joined John's team immediately. There was no competition or no you knew that's where you wanted yeah. to be or the, I, I knew that's where I fit in after I did a few inter interviews and with why different is brokerages. that because of the style and um the marketing and also I know people have you know they say that didn't it's either something good they either love him or hate him yeah John a has a very uh, unique reputation in Orange yes. County yes but his story to me you know, it it's just he had everything and then he lost everything and he's a comeback comeback kid, as yeah. he said himself. <laughs> so um, I respect that and I admire that and I love that about him. So it was an easy decision. And we saw on the show that you are the only woman on their team featured on the show. Mm -hmm. What's that like being around all guys? I love it. It's like it feels so comfortable. I. I'm, I've said this before, I roll with the guys, I'm at the, I'm surrounded with guys at the gym. It's a male dominated industry. Right. I'd say that for sure. But certain females with thick skin, I would say, or learn to get thick skin can kill it in this industry. Um, and it's just, I feel like I have a lot of older brothers protecting me. It's, right. it's very comforting. And if you saw the other team, I wouldn't want to, have a team full of females because they're just like all fighting all the time. What's the point? Right. You call them what? Ir irrelevance? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> irrelevance. <laughs> now, you, because you're the only woman on, on your team, mm -hmm. um, as we saw in the show, you got to do things like help John, you know, find a ring for mm -hmm. his fiance. So are you like the queen bee kind of telling them, OK, we need to do you're this so and keeping so them funny. in check? They say I am. I didn't even <laughs> notice I was until they said I am. Um, but I have such a great relationship with John's wife. Her and I we were actually born on the same day, different years, but same day. We share the same wow. birthday, so we have a lot in common. So yeah. 
Now, for anyone that hasn't been to the OC, mm -hmm. uh, what would they experience for the first time? Like, uh, you know, I've lived in, I'm from the East Coast, mm -hmm. but I've lived in LA for about six years now, and I've been as far as Fullerton, but mm -hmm. I haven't been to like all the areas that okay. were seen on the show. So what would they see? It's just, it's another world. It's If you're from LA, even if you're from LA, just taking a trip down to Orange County, it's so much more calm, mm. it's clean, it's peaceful, you have Newport Beach, you have Laguna Beach, you have the most beautiful beaches. Um, so it's literally, I'm living in a paradise. People come, it's one of the most gorgeous places on, you know, in the world. So people come here to vacation and to Orange County all the time. So I'm just so blessed and thankful for where I live. But it's, although it's an hour away from LA, I feel like it's another world. I mean, I saw the views on some of the homes in the show, and they were amazing. Speaking of the homes, what's the largest sale that you've made since you've been in the business? Largest sale that I have made has been 5.5 5 million. Wow. Yeah, I mean, people say, I mean, John and the rest of my team, we have like crazy sales. Mind you, I've been in the business for a little bit over two years. I just cracked into the luxury right at the tail, close to the end of shooting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we started shooting, I was a, I was the newest agent. I, I am the newest agent on right. the team, but I was new. I was brand spanking new. So I knew I had to work 10 times harder to catch up to these guys. Right. And I'm very competitive and I love the competition and I love the challenge. So it just, you know, I grinded my tail off until I, <laughs> I caught up. Now I'm selling these big homes with these guys. Wow. So it's so awesome. What techniques did you use? Because I saw that, you know, you have some unique techniques that are specific to you. You're big on using technology to mm -hmm. help with your sales. But yes. Can you talk to us some of that so strategy? So I'm big on social media and I have um, Twitter, Instagram, Oh my, Facebook, obviously Snapchat too, but <laughs> I'm, I'm very big on interacting with people and posting not only informative posts, but right. also showing people how it's like to go into a listing or um, how I put my listing presentation together. So I'm very hands-on with also my marketing material. I design every piece. I, I go back and forth with the, um, designer, the person who helps me design Like the graphic it. designer? Yeah, the graphic designer. We go back and forth for like a while until I perfect it. Right. So I'm very detail oriented and I'm very picky, mm -hmm. I should say. <laughs> and that can be a bad thing, but um, you know, I, I really am passionate about what I do. So my product has to be perfect if I'm putting it out there, my brand. And from what I saw on the show, a lot of the people that you deal with like have very specific needs and mm -hmm. they are very particular. So you kind of have to be, be a balance between their needs and what is realistic. Is that true? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. With, with like a, are you like I saw an example with Jojo she had somebody who he had a price that he wanted whereas she knew that this is what she could get and so that seemed to be a oh, yeah. theme is that something that you often have to battle with like you saying, do Listen, you this have is what to... I can do versus what you want absolutely um, hundred percent because you're lying to yourself if you tell the client that that's what you can get because you're investing your time your money everything into it you're putting your name out there your brand so if you lie to them, you're just hurting yourself and your reputation. So there's a lot of agents that do just to get the listing. Wow. So that's something that um, JoJo did that's very real and that's more of my style as well. Just keeping so, it honest. Mm -hmm. So is it difficult to be a woman in the real estate business? No, I don't think it is. I don't think it's any more difficult than a male if you have thick skin, you're a hustler, mm -hmm. you have, you know, the work ethics of a male because some females, you know, they may not be, you know, as a go-getter as a, I, I just feel like men are known to work harder than females, right? That That's what I feel like people think. That's what they think, yeah. But um, I would say 
being a young female is hard. Yeah. Because I don't have the gray hairs. I don't have <laughs> the years under my belt that they look at me and I'm their daughter's age. Or they look at me and I'm, you know, their son's age. And they're like, this girl's going to sell my home? Sometimes they doubt what you yeah, can do. Yeah, okay. exactly. So that's the more challenging part of it. But um, once you sit down with me and I give you uh, my analysis and my presentation, more than likely you're going to sign with me. So. Okay. <laughs> now, speaking of challenges, I know it's important to you to, like, empower women and be an advocate for, you know, strong women and mm -hmm. show them, like, if you work hard, you can, you know, succeed. Mm -hmm. um, but you've dealt with some other challenges in your past dealing with uh, eating disorders. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about how that started? Yeah, so back in high school... I've been dealing or I dealt with an eating disorder for nearly 10 years of my life, which first started off with anorexia. I had a, um, my mother was dealing with an illness at the time and I didn't know how to control my feelings and how to help my family. I felt helpless and hopeless and lost. Mm. So the only thing I did have control over was what I did to my body and what I put in my body. So that's where the anorexia came about. And then from anorexia, I it evolved into bulimia because I didn't get the proper treatment. And my father, my mother coming from another country didn't even understand what an eating disorder was. Right. So to them was brand new. They had to try to learn it at the same time and help me. So, you know, I was given two choices. So to to try to numb some of the pain that I was bringing to my family, I decided to act like I'm eating and play with my food and then I would feel so guilty and it went hand in hand to binging and purging mm. and it evolved to that. So I was stuck in that dark, deep hole for several years until I woke up and literally told myself that you either want to live or you continue this path, you're not going to be on this planet anymore. Right. And that to me was so much harder to accept knowing how much more pain I would bring my family. Right. So. And once you decided to make that change, what, were, what steps did you take to do that? Did you go to, did you get counseling? Did you I did get counseling. I, I was getting counseling even when I was really sick, mm. but I wasn't ready. And until you're ready, you're not going to help yourself right. or want to get help. So I confronted my dad that I was lying to all the doctors for a few years, and I needed a new set of doctors to work with. Wow. And he was totally okay with it, and we got a new group for me to work with. But, yeah, I had... Um, therapists that I talked to and counselors, but I didn't check into a, re a rehab or anything like that. Okay. Luckily, I put on enough weight um, like a week before that we were headed that direction. I put on, put on enough weight to not have to get checked in. So once that happened and you made that change in your life, now you are such an advocate for fitness and a healthy Absolutely. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are beauty and fitness goals right now, everyone. <laughs> you have to see. Thank but you. But what would you tell a young woman who's also battling those body issues right now? Eating disorder or body issues? Because I feel like they're two different things. So like people call it body dysphoria where you think you are you know bigger than you really right. are um well speak to both if if like as far as eating issues i would say and then how would you say positive steps that she can take like what should be the first step if someone is battling an eating disorder right now if she wants to make a change honestly i think the first step would be to get professional help i know if i got professional help earlier on I would have prevented years of damaging my body. Mm. The damage I've done to my body, I'm, I'm still young right now, so I'm not gonna see it all until later on. Right. But I know internally I've done quite some damage. So the first step was is to get professional help, obviously. Um, for, for females that are struggling with that, 
you know, body dysphoria thinking that they're because you I know, feel like that they're not. as women, your body is going to change. Your, your body at 20-something is not going to be your same body at 30-something. Mm-hmm. So even, you know, it, women, our bodies change. And sometimes if you never worked out and then suddenly you suddenly gain all this weight because your metabolism slowed down, that can affect your self-esteem. So mm-hmm. if anyone's going through issues with, like, their self-esteem and just trying to figure out what they should do, what would you recommend? I would say the best thing to do is set a goal and just, you know, kick butt until you reach your goal there's has to be balance so for me it was a lot of inconsistency with working out so i was known for the person to fluctuate weight so much Mm. within five years i probably look like four different people um, just because of the weight gain and loss and gain and loss so i wasn't consistent so consistency and setting a goal and sm- smashing that goal is probably <laughs> so the what's, best. So what's your secret now? Like, what's your routine? Because, okay, what I would love to know is you have a very demanding job mm-hmm. and a business that you're running, and then you also are working out and maintaining your health. So, like, give me an idea of what, like, a day in your, your schedule would be like okay. in one day. So I wake up at f- between 5.05 and 5.15 every morning. Ooh. My workout starts at 6 a.m., I work out till about 7.15, then I head home, shower, and get ready for my day. When my day's done, about two to three times, I should say two to four times a week, I go back for round two because I do have a stressful life and it is fast paced and it can be a roller coaster ride all in one day. So a few roller coaster rides, I should say, <laughs> and putting out fires. Right. So, so a lot of times I do go back at night to just unwind and relax. It's not as an intense of a workout right. in the evening. It's more to release. So like where other people are drinking a glass of wine, you're at the gym. Yes. Okay. Noting noting that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I try not to drink. Okay. Yeah, I so mean, that's another tip I'll be writing down. No yeah. drinking. <laughs> so I'm assuming no drinking, lots I of do, water. I do drink um, occasionally. But it's not a weekly thing or a weekday thing. No. In moderation. Yeah, in moderation. Okay. Everything in moderation, and you'll be just fine. Chocolate in moderation, chips in moderation, <laughs> you'll be just fine. So you're not depriving yourself no, of anything. No, absolutely not. Yeah. No, I'm just very, I work out anywhere between five to six days a week, and that would include five to eight workouts a week. Okay. Okay. Um, now, what are some of the other ways that you unwind from work in addition to, to working out? Like, are you a girly girl? Do you love, like, getting facials, love, getting your I hair mean, done? I love, I am a girly girl, and I love glam. So I have one room in my house mm-hmm. that is Hoda Zone only, okay. which means it's my glam room, and I have a vanity, I have... It's literally like a mini Sephora. Okay. I have Ooh. every beauty product you can think of. <laughs> All my girlfriends text me, what is your, you know, what's your breakdown of your skin routine or what is this or what is that? I literally um, lay everything out, take photos for them and send it to them. And they're like, you are such a lifesaver. This would have taken me five years to figure out if I kept buying products and trying things. And so. um, So instead of a man cave, you have a glam cave. Yes. Okay. I love it. That's what it's, that's (laughs) funny. Yeah. Glam cave. I I love that. I mean, it's important because your work is stressful and then it's a very image conscious Mm -hmm. uh, type of field as well. So you got to kind of be on point, which Mm -hmm. I love. Thank you. So I wanted to ask you a few other favorites. It's holiday season now and we just had Thanksgiving where everyone's thankful. So you've been so blessed and so successful. I just kind of wanted to ask you a couple of your personal favorite things. Uh, we will start with your favorite way to unwind other than the gym. Honestly, makeup. I love trying new things and learning new things. I follow a lot of um, people on social media, makeup artists that inspire me. Hmm. So their inspiration makes me want to try new looks. So I, I'll sit there in front of my vanity and just play. Okay. It's like... My face is my canvas. Okay. So are you like, what are you trying now? Are you trying a new contouring technique or? I I already, I got that. I think I got that one nailed. It's so funny because my makeup artist was asking me to give her my breakdown. (laughs) And I was like, what? I've known you for 12 years. You're asking me. I love that. (laughs) So 
Um, no, I love playing with like trying to change the look on my eyes. Okay. Yeah. It's 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 difficult. Like you see things on YouTube and you think I can do that, and then it doesn't come out the same way all yeah. the time. So yeah. I really trial and error. Yeah, I admire that. <laughs> What's your favorite food? Sushi. Oh, and your favorite beauty item? Favorite beauty item would be um, a setting powder. Mm -hmm. I am obsessed. I set my face all every day with so setting powder. So you use powder. Do you also use a spray? Because I see people I, using sprays. I do, but I do a spray, and then after I do the spray, I do the loose powder. I like that. Yeah. Please take notes, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Um, what's your favorite holiday? I would have to say Christmas. Mine too. Yeah. I love New Year's also. Um, favorite color? Black, obviously. <laughs> favorite restaurant? Sugarfish. Oh, I love sugarfish. I have to drive to LA for that. But which one do you go to? The one in La Brea? Anyone I can get to. Um, usually the one in Beverly Hills. Nice. Yeah. And what's your favorite thing about the OC? Favorite thing about the OC? I would say Newport Beach, Newport Coast area. Just that that area. I love it. It's the area I work in the most and has the most gorgeous homes. The most beautiful resort, Pelican Hill, mm. is is located there. So, I would say Newport. And who's your favorite style icon? Okay, we were. I was thinking about this earlier. So, um, it's so random. So, Clara, is it Clara? Clara Underwood. Clara, Clara Underwood. Oh, Claire from Underwood. House of Cards. Her, her character. Amazing. In House of Cards. Yeah. That stylist nailed it. Flawless. Like, Hair, makeup, wardrobe, everything. Wardrobe, like, out of this world. Like, I will screenshot and I'll try to find it. <laughs> it's, it's so classy. She looks and it's great so all the time. Timeless. Yeah. So, I would say her character on that show. Word is we'll be getting more of her, so <laughs> stay tuned. Um, and do you have a Hollywood crush? Hollywood crush... Ooh. <laughs> I know you're engaged. No, but... <laughs> I know, but who's my Hollywood? It used to be George Clooney, but he's not so oh. good lately. <laughs> um, gosh, that's a hard. I can't believe I Well, just... have you sold to any homes to any celebrities that we would know that you not can share? celebrities. I have had some athletes. Okay. Um, but I can't go or mention who right because they were actually they bought properties that i had listed okay so they yeah um professional athletes but yeah no, no celebrities not yet okay coming soon yes like i said i love the show have you heard anything anything about a season two possibly i haven't yet okay i was told by the network that it takes um some time maybe a few weeks right. or maybe a few months but once we do here if there is a season two which i'm hoping and i'm sure there will be that will probably shoot immediately perfect, start shooting perfect. immediately well please come back to after buzz again Absolutely. for season two catch hoda on real estate wars my name is sahai and you can find me on social media at say hi sahai that's s-a-y-h-i-t-s-a-h-a-i and hoda where can they find you on social media hoda realty that's Hoda, H-O-D-A, and then Realty. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Good night. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.